I'm live now. Hello everyone, I'm Alicia Krause, and if you're watching this video for the very first time, or any of my videos for the very first time, thank you for joining, and be sure to click subscribe on YouTube and share with friends and comment. I know I'm not super quick about getting back to comments all the time, have four kids in the house, and I'm researching homeschooling, which I'm gonna do a video about maybe in a couple of weeks, by the way, so tune in for that one. Uh, but I do try to respond to everyone, people who agree and disagree, um, and hi, Johnny, I see that you're there first, so thanks Thanks for tuning in. I wanted to talk a little bit about Kamala Harris as somebody that has resided in California for almost eight years and experienced her as a senator and an attorney general. Uh, I think that I don't have to warn most of the people that are watching, but I feel like warning y'all, especially because I have friends from all across the political perspective, and I have a lot of friends today that are celebratory about Joe Biden picking Kamala. Um, and I have a lot of issues with her, and I think that people either on the right or the left have brought up legitimate problems with her as a person and her record. And I think that if we are going to be true feminists, which I would like to identify as, and I think that I identify as, then we need to address her and treat her equal to that of whether or not she, she was a man, right? If she was a man, we'd be talking about the same issues with her and because she's a woman and she's vying for vice president of the United States on a ticket with a guy that she served with in the Senate for a long time, I think that we should look at her record. And it's appalling. It's really scary, especially if you're a person that is a freedom loving, um, small government minded type of person like myself there has been so much overreach um, specifically during her time as AG of the state uh, of course too many pro-life people were very familiar with the story of David Daleiden and how he went undercover and exposed um, not just the atrocities of course the abortions that were happening at Planned Parenthood but their sales of body parts and them not revealing that or exposing that or asking permission of the women who went in to end their baby's lives and the profit that they were making off of that. Kamala Harris, a lot of people don't remember, um, very specifically targeted delight in using our two-party consent laws here in the state of California, in which that if I'm on the phone with my husband or a friend and we're both in the state, actually, even I think if one of the parties is in the state of California, then you have to get um, permission from them in order to record the conversation or even I think in some cases quote the conversation uh, so there we are a two-party consent state other states do not have this but California does she used that law for the very first time in history in the state by the way to prosecute a journalist David Daleiden is a journalist he is a pro-life journalist he knew exactly what he was doing he had the intent to expose Planned Parenthood for what they were doing profiting off of dead babies' bodies um, you know, they said in the name of science, but she used that to prosecute him. And in fact, secretly met with members of Planned Parenthood here in Los Angeles. She came down from the Bay Area, came down from Sacramento and met with members of Planned Parenthood's corporate team and witnesses against David Daleiden to help create a case for him. This wasn't a prosecutor doing the job that she was supposed to do. This is a prosecutor using her position to specifically target those that she disagreed with politically. That's atrocious. It's appalling. I mean, another example of people that have maybe defended things or had to defend things as, uh, in certain jobs as prosecutors um, are, you know, Greg Abbott in Texas or Senator Ted Cruz also in Texas. Sorry, they're the first ones that are coming to my mind right now. I think even Louis Gohmert, <laughs> oh, third guy from Texas, sorry, <laughs> when he was a judge has talked about things that sometimes you do refer to the laws on the books, even if you personally don't agree with those laws on the books. Turns out that's what makes a decent prosecutor or a judge, right? They're, they swear to uphold the law and that's what they're supposed to do. But those guys in their positions and other women that have held their positions, including friends of mine that work for DA's offices around the country, have never used a law or their position of power, and it's a complete abuse of power, to then specifically target and go after somebody and try to find a law and figure it out to potentially win their case. That's what Kamala Harris did with David Daleiden. And I think it's a complete infringement on his right as someone that should be protected under the First Amendment and really should be somebody that's protected under whistleblower laws. I mean, Kamala Harris has often said that she stands for the little guy, which is laughable if you look at her record as a prosecutor. Um, but, you know, if she stands for the little guy, then how come she isn't for the exposure of truth when it comes to 
a multi-million dollar organization, albeit a nonprofit organization, you could argue, that was being dishonest to their patients, to their clientele, and to their donors and consumers. Uh, in addition to that, I, I personally am concerned. I know that Silicon Valley is super duper excited about her and apparently donors uh, in left-leaning Silicon Valley have long been waiting to see who Biden would pick. Biden, of course, has been saying for a while since the very, like since the primaries that he would pick a woman. If personally, if I were Kamala, I'd be offended that he just decided to pick somebody because they have a hoo-ha. Um, I would want to be picked for other things, you know, like my resume and my experience. And she does have experience. I disagree with her experience. I disagree with what she's done with it or how she got there. Um, and I think it's apparent that a lot of the growth that she has had is because she isn't a principled person. She's a, a leftist, but um, she will kind of change what she does and what she believes when it's a politically appropriate for her to take that next step up the ladder. And I think that's a problem. I think, you know, personally and Politically, I disagree with Elizabeth Warren, but at least she believes what she says, right? That was one of the things that was said about Bernie Sanders. Like, you know what the guy is and you know what he believes and you might disagree with him like I do on a host of issues or 99% of issues, but he seems as if he truly believes in those things. Like he's bought into socialism, right? Um, and I think that, sorry, said that there's a poor connection, so I'm trying to reconnect here, but I think that it's... Um, it's fascinating to me that Biden said, well, I'm going to choose a woman simply because she's a woman. That's the antithesis of feminism. In addition to that, I'm bothered that many members of Silicon Valley who control the narrative of what we see on social media a lot are saying that they're excited for Kamala because I'm concerned about their censorship of people like you and me. And I'm also concerned about her censorship and criminal prosecution and civil prosecution against people that she disagreed with politically. And if we continue, if we give somebody like that power, I mean, we're screwed. Um, and I'm definitely never a fan, no matter whose side of the aisle it is. I'm not a fan of Donald Trump threatening to shut down the media, whether or not I agree with the mainstream media. It's wrong. And it's an infringement of First Amendment rights. I think it's dumb when he takes away people's media passes to the White House. And I got perturbed. And I think it was wrong of Barack Obama when he targeted, you know, gun slinging, Bible uh, grabbing, Fox News watching Christians and would attack talk radio. Uh, I'm, I'm very even keeled when it comes to the problems with um, targeted harassment of people that we disagree with. And I think it's dangerous when people in positions of power use that power to quash someone's free speech or to quash a revealing of the truth. And if you look at Kamala's record, she is the top cop. She was the top cop. I know that once she got to the Senate, she just tried to pivot, which is another political maneuver that she made. And she tried to pivot to make herself appeal to um, minority voters and African members of the African American community that are for criminal justice reform. But when you look at her record here as AG of California, she was the top cop. And I think it's kind of laughable that you have the Democratic Party in lots of mainstream areas moving to the left and talking about defunding the police, but then they choose somebody who really protected, I mean, Ben Shapiro even brought up today, there are circumstances in which she protected people that were um, cheating and manipulating on the job and, and unabashedly protected somebody who should have been fired for doing their job wrong that ended up leading to 600 cases being thrown out because they were a corrupt person. And so I think that she is corrupt. I think that she is authoritarian. I think that obviously she is very, very far to the left. And I think overall it was a really bad pick by Joe Biden. I think that if he wanted to stick to his promise of, uh, you know, picking a woman, of course there's conservative women that I would have loved. Heck, Condi's here and she's not the biggest fan of Trump. Maybe you could have picked her. <laughs> but um, there's a lot on her record to show. I don't think she's going to appeal to the Rust Belt. I don't think she's going to appeal to the Bible Belt. And I think that he should have gone with somebody like an Amy, Amy Klobuchar, um, even a Kirsten Gillibrand, I think, could have pivoted and been a little more appealing. Um, and Kamala didn't do too hot in the debates. Uh, I think she might do good versus Mike Pence if there happened to be, be vice presidential debates. Who knows? But I think that it was a really 
appealing to the very small group of people on social media that have the loudest voices instead of looking at the lay of the land and seeing that maybe even moderate and independent voters want somebody that's more staid, want somebody that's more down the middle, don't want somebody as vitriolic or loud mouth or inappropriate or whatever words you want to say about the president, right? And Biden tries to present himself as that moderate, middle of the road, kind of safe grandpa guy next door. And by choosing a radical like Kamala Harris, I don't see how he appeals to those middle of the road voters or for the people that didn't turn out for Hillary Clinton. I don't know how he convinces them to now turn out for him and Kamala. So that's my rant. Sorry I got interrupted on Instagram with that internet being shut off. Um, let me know your thoughts. I think I'm gonna be back in a week or two to talk about homeschooling and the lay of edu the lay of the land with regards to education. But let me know what you guys want me to talk about next, because I would love to hear what you guys want me to talk about, and I would love to give you what you want. Give the people what they want. That's capitalism. All right, I'll talk soon. Bye. <laughs>